Hey everyone, Show me here and welcome back to our next episode of the SWE World Cup of Wrestling 2018. Now this one, unfortunately, is a little bit of a dead match. Europe have already been knocked out. New Zealand, if with a decent enough result, can finish top of the group though. But here is our first match of the evening. It is going to be Rusev of Europe taking on Travis Banks of New Zealand. Now, like I was just saying, currently the group sits as follows. United States are top with 10 points. New Zealand second on 9. Scotland third on 5th. And Europe fourth on 3. Now, of course, Europe will need 3 points to not finish bottom of the group. New Zealand need 2 points to win the group. So a 3-2 win here for Europe will be fine for both parties. And they'll both accept that, I think. But uh, either way, I'm sure both of them are going to want more than that. Europe have had a terrible run so far. Really been poor in this uh, competition. New Zealand have really been a, a bit of a shock here in the Group A. Now, I expected New Zealand to probably give Europe a little bit of room for their money in second place. However, for them to win the group, after the first episode when US hammered Europe, I thought, you know what, US have got this competition locked down straight away. But then for New Zealand to walk out and hammer America 4-1 was crazy. And of course, US did have a good 4-1 victory against Scotland a couple of days ago, um, which put them top of the group. But New Zealand, like I said, New Zealand need two points. The one thing I don't want here is a 4-1 win for Europe. Because a 4-1 win for Europe will mean we will have to have a buff match between New Zealand and US, which I don't think we really need to, in fairness. I feel like it would be uh, a lot simpler if this one were to go a bit easier, you know, for me. I don't mind doing extra episodes. I'm quite happy to, to be honest with you, but it just ruins my schedule a little bit. It's trying to squeeze an extra one in here and there. I dare say we'll have to at some point. But after the end of this episode, we will know for definite which two. Well, we know already it's US and New Zealand, but we know which way the teams will be. Of course, the winner of Group A will take on the runners-up of Group B. Which Group B is still quite wide open to be honest. All four teams could qualify in Group B. That's going to be a lot more entertaining to watch uh, in a few days' time. Um, and, uh, of course, the second place in Group A will take on the winner of Group B. Which, uh, yeah, Group B with Japan, Australia, England and India. Currently, India top in the group on seven. Uh, England second on six. Japan third on four. And Australia fourth on three that is a real interesting group that one our first match in that one will be japan versus australia so third versus fourth and that could really be uh one that could throw a spatter in the works either way now japan need a massive victory in that one to stand much of a chance if japan get knocked out then the u.s will feel very very comfortable but australia the easiest team in the competition well, the easiest team in that group is the one that japan has left so you feel like japan would have a strong performance against Australia. They will need at least a 4-1 win to stand much of a chance and hope that England versus India goes strong one way or the other. If England versus India ends up 3-2, then uh, it doesn't really matter because India will go through. And that will be a, an interesting one to go through. Rusev taking Travis Banks up, but Banks with the DDT. I'm really enjoying this World Cup. I'm hoping you guys are as well. We are on episode 19 now. And believe it or not, I've recorded all these episodes in the space of a week and a half. I'm doing really well. I'm re That's how much I'm enjoying this. I really do enjoy tournaments on this game. Doing tournaments is a big thing for me. I really enjoy it. And I feel like in the new house that I've got here and my new setup, I think just recording in general has become a lot easier and a lot um, better for me. So we should be able to get a lot more better quality content out for you and a lot more quality content out for you as well. So hopefully you'll be able to keep on top of my schedule for a change. Well, I've managed to get two weeks ahead on my holiday, so I'm doing something right in this new house. Banks, they're just stamping on the arm of Rusev. Now, stamping on the arm once again. Clever maneuver there. Of course, um, Banks, I don't think he's got that many um, submissions in his arsenal. However, by damaging the, the arms of Rusev, it's going to definitely weaken the potential um, accolade Rusev could knock in. That was a nice move by Rusev. Just launched up in the air and then dropping the knee in the gut. That was pretty interesting, actually, by Rusev. Rusev! Headbutt, nice. Not really Rusev's move like, but... Rusev gets her on the back. Oh, what a suplex, wow. Travis Banks folding in half, neck first. Like an accordion. Rusev throws Banks into the corner. Oh, 
Bounced off each other. Now the front chancery. Rusev takes Banks up and oh, just launches him across the ring into the corner. Rusev now bringing Banks back up. Banks fighting back. There's a stiff forearm. But Rusev taking him down. Rusev now that big side slam once again. Banks holding his back. He's in pain. Rusev now taking Banks down once again and dropping the elbow right on the inside of the arm. That's going to do some damage. That's going to cause some pain. Rusev now dropping the elbows right in the shoulder of Travis Banks and slamming him back of the head first into the mat as well. Stamping on the arm. And Rusev is really feeling this one now. Double axe handle right to the spine. Brings Banks back up to his feet. Now Rusev once again going with that big side slam. It's almost like he's stolen somebody else's moveset for this one. But now he mounts Travis Banks in to the accolade. Will we see a submission victory for Rusev in the first match? Now Banks knows that New Zealand are going through. Does he want to risk taking any permanent injury? And he does not wish to do that. And he taps out to Rusev's accolade. So let's say, does Travis Banks really want to risk taking any injuries into the next round? But that is interesting. Rusev gets the points. Like I say, as long as this doesn't finish 4-1 to Europe, 3-2 to Europe, or 3-2 to New Zealand, or even 4-1 um, or 5-0, well it's not going to be 5-0 to New Zealand now is it, but for, those are the results to put New Zealand top of the group, 5-0 to Europe means that New Zealand can't win the group, but Europe will want to finish ahead of Scotland, they would like that, they're currently one point behind Scotland now. But I think that's a wise manoeuvre there by Travis Banks. Like I said, he knows that there's some big matches yet to come and they could end up with Japan or England or something like that. So um, you don't want to walk into that next round injured. So you don't want to risk taking that damage. You don't want to risk taking any long-term damage into the next round that somebody else could pick up on and really take advantage of. So Rusev gets the victory. I feel like Travis Banks may have been a bit smart there. And here is our second match of the evening. Cesaro takes on Bad Luck Fale. Interesting one, this one. Two of the bigger men in the competition. That does mean, of course, we will see Alistair Black versus Jay White, which is going to be a, a Black versus White. I didn't realise that. <laughs> oh, that's a tag team, that is. A bit of Black and White in Carnage. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Black and White. I think Alistair Black and uh, Jay White could work as a tag team on Carnage? I don't know. I think I've just got a bit mad there, to be honest. We can get someone called Grey. Is there a rest of a Grey? There was that, what's his name? Oliver Grey, used to be an NXT. One half of the original NXT Tag Team Champions, alongside Neville, was it? Um, can't think of any of us. Alistair Black, Jay White and Oliver Grey. Let's get him going, let's get him in. So Cesaro will be looking to continue this on. He knows that he knows that Europe could really do with a decent result here. In fairness, they've lost both matches so far. They lost against the US quite convincingly. They lost to Scotland as well. No, 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 they beat Scotland, didn't they? They beat Scotland 3-2, didn't they, actually? I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, do I? I haven't got a bloody clue what the hell I'm on about, have I? As here comes the underboss himself, Bad Luck Farley, representing New Zealand. Not had much hassle for that so far. I think everyone's just sort of accepted uh, my reasoning behind that. It, it made sense to have Bad Luck Farley here. Like I said, he was born in Tonga, but um, spent a large portion of his younger life in New Zealand. And went to university in New Zealand, played for a, uh, was it a rugby team, I think, there? He's perfect for rugby. He's a massive lad. Um, and like I said before, it's... Uh, it's a lot to do with the country you're representing rather than anything else. Um, Bad Luck Friday represent New Zealand. Of course, like I said before, it was we're sort of forced into the decision, really, because if we didn't use Bad Luck Farley, we would have had to use one of the Bushwhackers. I'm sorry, that's not a situation I'm willing to get into. Because if we used one of the Bushwhackers, that would have really deteriorated the chance of New Zealand. Imagine that. It would have been... It just would have been too... It would have ruined it a bit, I think. We don't have anyone too basic in this competition. The Bushwhackers are notoriously like jobbers I think in history yeah, it would have been a bit um, disappointing wouldn't it so 
So a shake of the hands here between Bad Luck Fale and Cesaro. The referee rings the bell and we are underway. Nice uppercut by Cesaro and a few more big strikes. Cesaro now sending Balak Fale off the... Uh, went to the ropes of 6-1-9 by Cesaro. Wow. Cesaro starting this one fast. Europe know they're out of the competition, but they really want to... Um, they really embarrass New Zealand here, don't they, really? They really want to get themselves back into where they should be Say so they, uh, Europe were the, were the, were the second favourites. I thought Europe were really going to give US a run for their money. Obviously did not happen that way. It's been New Zealand that have really been the surprise package. And there's been a couple of surprise packages so far. Like I said, India, currently top of Group B. That's been a very surprise package for me as well. Ballot fire now taking Cesaro up. Double-handed chokeslam taking Cesaro down. Fale now headbutts the top of the head of Cesaro. Brings Cesaro back up to his feet. Now Fale sends Cesaro back into the ring. Completely misses the kick. Well done, Fale. Well done. Fale sends Cesaro back in. Wow, just flattens him. Absolutely flattened him. Cesaro fighting back. Nice headbutt on bad luck, Fale. Fale now has Cesaro, drapes him across that top rope and pinged back into the middle of the ring. Of course, Bad Luck Fale does have a victory over Daniel Bryan in his locker in this competition so far. And New Zealand will be hoping that he can get a victory here as well. Like I said, New Zealand need just two points here this evening to guarantee top of the group. That's all they need. But a 4-1 win for um, Europe now would mean that we would have a buffer match. That's the only result that would lead to a buffer match. But even if Europe were to win 5 0, of course, they cannot qualify. They are currently they're currently um five points uh, sorry, they're currently six points below New Zealand. So it was would not work for them. Nice spear there by Bad Luck Fale taking Cesaro down. It's a manoeuvre he's used quite comfortably in this competition before to get New Zealand the points. Bad luck Fale now Takes Cesaro up onto the shoulders. Lifts him up looking for the razor's edge. There it is. Big powerbomb. Fale drags Cesaro away from the ropes. Into the pin he goes. One. Two. No, Cesaro kicked out. Okay. Okay, not expecting that one. Fale now dragging Cesaro back up to his feet, slamming him face first across the knee. Nice little bounce there by uh, Fale. Don't know what he was going for there, to be honest. Nice jawbreaker there by Cesaro. There's an uppercut. And just clotheslines. Bad luck Fale to the outside. And Cesaro starting to come back into this one now. New Zealand will be itching. Of course, New Zealand, if they win the six-man tag, they will do enough to go through as uh, group winners. I'm not 100% sure at this point in time that whether winning the group is the best thing for you, though, is it really? Cesaro, very European uppercut, just launching Fale into the air, catches him, but Fale's just straight back up, taking Cesaro up his shoulders. Fale no-sold it. He completely no-sold Cesaro's signature manoeuvre. And now Fale just clotheslined Cesaro to the outside. This is an interesting match. I'm liking this. This is going really well. I'm liking this. I am. Ballot final taking Cesaro up. But Cesaro with the DDT. Cesaro dropping the leg drop. Brings Fale back up to his feet. Nice spinning neck breaker. Cesaro bringing Fale back up. But Fale now sending Cesaro back into the ring. Cesaro, there's the stiff uppercut now stalking. Bad luck, Fale. Cesaro tripping him over and goes for the sharpshooter. Rolls him over. It's locked in. And once again, is a member of the New Zealand team going to tap out here? 
It might again. It's like Travis Banks. He might have to just not take any injuries into the next round. He does. Okay. This is making it very interesting now. Europe gets two points, which puts them equal with Scotland in the group. If Europe were to win this bloody 5-0, that would be insane. It really would. Look at that razor's edge there by Badluck Fale on Cesaro. And you thought there and then that New Zealand were going to get the point. But no, Cesaro had other ideas. He kicked out. Like so. Then into that massive European uppercut. Which no, uh, but no luck. Which bad luck Fale completely no sold. And then Cesaro just rolling through into the sharpshooter. Homage to his friend Tyson Kidd, of course. And that was enough for bad luck Fale to have to tap again. Just like Travis Banks, it's not worth him taking injuries into the next round. They know no matter what here, New Zealand have qualified. But they don't want to take the injuries into the next round. Cesaro victorious, 2-0 to Europe on the night. And the group still sits at US on 10. New Zealand on 9. Scotland on 5. Europe on 5. With three points up for grabs. Two of those points is all New Zealand need to get themselves top of the group. This should be very interesting. Now, Alistair Black versus Jay White to come. Can Black make it free and free? Be interesting if he can. And if Black does win that singles match, it means that we won't have to have a buffer match either. And here it is in our third and final singles match of the evening. Black versus White. Alistair Black versus Jay White. Now, I like these guys. Jay White is someone that I don't really i've not really seen wrestle that often but for some reason there's something about him that drags me in i don't know what it is now i will admit still well when you're watching this hopefully i will have seen it but i have yet to watch dominion i believe from what i've read and what people have told me in the comment section dominion may very well be one of the best wrestling shows ever put together which is a massive massive claim now I know I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I still have yet to sign up to New Japan World. And I believe I'm going to have to when I get back off my holiday. But I've just got Dominion. I'm not going to say how because it's um, not the best way of doing it. Um, and I will have it on my tablet to watch on my flight, which is tomorrow bloody morning. So, um, yeah, that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Apparently it was fantastic. Omega versus Okada was absolutely insane by all accounts. So that's going to be pretty good. I'm really looking forward to it, actually. Uh, I was a little bit... Um, not disappointed, not let down. It's a, it's less of an aggressive word than that. It's um, Just after the past two Wrestle Kingdoms have been absolutely insane, this year's one wasn't quite at the same level. It was still a very good show, but it wasn't quite at the level that I was anticipating and hoping for. Now... I don't want to make any assumptions to why that's the case. Um, for me, and I, I hate to say this because I was hyped for this match, but Jericho is a fantastic wrestler. But do I feel like maybe utilizing Omega against somebody else at that point in time would have been beneficial? For in-ring ability, yes. However, for the sheer magnitude of the match, Jericho versus Omega was perfect. Jericho versus Omega. Now, that Wrestle Kingdom this year was the one that I believe had the highest viewing rating, brought the most people into the network, all that sort of stuff. And the majority of that would have been down to that match between Jericho and Omega. However, just the purist in me would have loved to have seen more of Omega versus Akada or Omega versus Naito or even Omega versus Elgin was fantastic a couple of years ago, wasn't it, in that ladder match? So, yeah, it's just, oh, I just, I can't, I'm looking forward to it. I believe the match, wasn't the match like something like a, an hour and 20 minutes or something stupid like that? I, I did see someone put on Twitter after the day after Dominion, because I know the results. That's the annoying thing. I'm, yeah, I know, the res oh, I know the two main results, which is really frustrating me that has. But um, somebody put on there that Okada versus Omega in that one match, there was like an hour and 20 minutes, I think it was, that one match wrestled longer than Brock Lesnar's entire championship reign. 
that 450 odd day championship reign Brock Lesnar's got that looks like it's going to stretch even longer because it's not 100% sure he's even going to turn up for WrestleMania yet. Not WrestleMania, sorry, SummerSlam. But that, that's pretty cool, and I, I, I'm really disappointed that Team Japan is doing so badly at the moment. But, of course, in a couple of days' time, if they get a strong performance against Australia, they might just have enough to be able to get through. But at this point in time, Team Japan are looking pretty down and out. They had a poor performance against Team India, didn't they, really? And Team England hammered them as well. Nice elbow drop there by Jay White on Alistair Black. Bit of black on white. Or white on black at the moment. Don't Google that, whatever you do. Um, some very interesting results when you type in black on white. Um, so yeah, it, it, don't Google it. Alistair Black, nice T-bone suplex launching Jay White across the ring. Jay White knows a point here would be enough to put them joint top of the group and give them at least a buffer match. If Jay White does lose this one, it will literally, this entire group's leadership will go down to the six-man tag. Essentially, if New Zealand win the six-man tag, they finish top of the group. If they lose the six-man tag, they will finish second in the group. Which, at the moment, we don't know what's better, do we, really? It all depends on Group B. The Group B is so wide open, we don't know who's going to finish where. So we don't know whether it's better to actually lose or whether it's better to win, whether it's better to finish second or first. Who knows? At this point in time, because at the moment, India being top of the group and England being second, I, I personally fancy myself against India more than England. But if Japan as a late surgeon comes into second and England hammer India, then all of a sudden, then India drop out as England and Japan. It, it's, it's so many different possibilities. It's really... Uh, out there at the moment, but Jay White in control at this point in time. A nice boot right in the arm of Alistair Black. I'm so glad Alistair Black's on this game now. We're going to use him a lot, I think. Although he's not in my carnage roster yet, I need to look. At, I need to try and squeeze him in somewhere. Oh, I've got somewhere to squeeze him in. Oh, have I got somewhere to squeeze him in? Where's my notebook? I have to write that down. Let's write down this random envelope I just found. Alistair Black. Uh, okay. That is a, that's good. I like that. That is very good. Almost too good. Of course, the problem is Alistair Black is someone that we are going to use a lot of, I think. And he just fits in a lot of different style of roster. I want to do... Uh, I, I, I've mentioned quite a few different types of roster that we could do at some point, haven't I? But, um... Like, I was thinking, like, a Polynesian-style roster at some point. Just just, just to change things up and do different bits and bobs. Like, Polynesian-style wrestling. So, using Samoa and Tonga and Australia and New Zealand and them sort of teams. Um, the European roster. So, using a lot of the British talent as well as, obviously, the Scottish and Irish and Welsh talent and Northern Irish... Um, and, of course, the, the German talent as well. There's the... Um, oh, somebody told me this the other day, and I can't remember what it was called. The Blade Runner. And Jade White gets it. Jade White gets it, and New Zealand get the point, which puts them joint top of the group. So, now, this is the one for me now. So, if you, if New Zealand... If New Zealand win the six-man tag, they win the night 3-2 and finish top of the group. If Europe win the group then both US and New Zealand will be on 10 points and we will have to have a buffer match to decide who will win the group. So Alistair Black holds Jay White's hand up high and be ready for the six-man tag. And here is that six-man tag. Then Team Europe takes on Team New Zealand in a match that will maybe decide Group A. Now, I have read a few comments about people saying that, um, and, and I agree, and I do agree, but um, and I did think about it to start off with, but it just, it was, well, mainly a lot of my laziness, I suppose, but um, the fact that we do have the three singles matches and straight into the six-man tag is a bit difficult because Alistair Black has literally just wrestled and goes backstage just to get an entrance back in with the other two guys, but let's just assume, I don't know if anyone's been to a live wrestling show isn't that, in the UK, Let's just assume that we've had our three singles matches. Let me break for like a half an hour intermission for drinks and snacks. Let's just assume that's the case. 
And then uh, and then that'll happen, yeah. And I've just cut it out. Let's just assume that happened. Does that work? I don't know. I should have done, like a lot of people have said, maybe you should have done like a just a random little match in there just to showcase someone else or maybe mix two countries' matches into one or or what. Maybe we should have done some other sort of lines. But yeah, it was just, it was just difficult to try and squeeze it all in. I think for the finals and maybe the semi-finals, we might do that, might showcase some of the other countries that were did pretty well or something on them sort of lines. It might be a good idea. Maybe it's like a special attraction match here and there for the semis and the quarters, but for the group stage, we're just going to assume there's an intermission that I've just cut out. Does that work? It gives us better RP, doesn't it? Roleplay, for example. I don't know. Who the hell bloody knows at this point in time? Who the bloody hell knows? So Cesaro and Rusev fresh off submission victories. Alistair Black with a loss to Jay White. The light always defeats the dark side, obviously. And this is the big one. This is the one that will decide the group. Who finishes top? Will it be Jay White? What? Will it be New Zealand? If they win the six-man tag? Or if New Zealand don't win the six-man tag, we get a buffer match. Now, I, I don't know. We don't necessarily need a buffer match, I suppose. I could do it just by who won the direct match between the two. So, if they finish on equal points, then technically New Zealand should win the group because they defeated US 4-1. But then again, they've not... They've not taken that ability across all three matches they've had. So I feel like a buffer match is the fairest way of doing it. Plus it's an extra episode. And I, I, I'm really enjoying this, so why not? Why the hell not? Bad luck Filer making his way into the ring then. He's definitely shown himself as the underboss. Maybe the most experienced member of these three now. Travis Banks, of course, looks like he might have signed an exclusive D. An, ex an exclusivity deal with WWE, hence his uh, inclusion in the the uh, the UK tournament and potentially the the new UK brand that's actually coming. The UK brand is actually coming. Maybe we should do that as one of ours. Though. Ooh, yeah, yeah, maybe SWE's UK brand should be done at some point to celebrate the upcoming WWE UK brand coming in. That could work, but our UK brand would be different. Because it would showcase some other people. I feel like Alistair Black could be involved in the UK brand. I feel like... Obviously Seamus, Finn Balor, Neville. Maybe Neville will be involved in the UK brand. I don't know what, poor old Neville. Poor old Neville. Just do something, Neville. Just apologise. I know you're being stubborn and this, that and the other. And you feel like you're wasting away. But just... Just apologise and get yourself back on telly, man. Come on. That, that's what we all want. Anyway, big six-man tag then at the moment. Um, it's all up in the air at the moment. USA will be hoping that... Um, or will they? I'm saying USA will be hoping that um, Europe can pick up the victory. But then again, USA might be thinking, we don't want an extra match. It's going to tire us out too close to the next round. We want to go straight through. So it's, it's very up and down about what exactly certain people would want. The moment, though, it's Alistair Black and... Well, I was going to say Cesaro in control, but Control has switched hands and it's now uh, Travis Banks. Jay White now with the arm breaker on Rusev. Rusev Pachka. Rusev Bidia. I made that up. don't know if that's right or not. Alistair Black just bouncing shoulder to shoulder with Jay White. Of course, Jay White getting the victory against Alistair Black. Oh, Black will want some retribution here. And Europe in firm control here. Really firm control. Although, bad luck Farley in the ring now taking Alistair Black up on his shoulders. Looking for the backbreaker shock treatment style. Uh... Bad luck Farley there. Should have been trying to take out Rusev, but instead just drop kick the referee in the back instead, which is always fun. Cesaro now hoisting up Jay White. Using his core body strength to go for that gut wrench suplex. 
it's pretty even at the moment. Um, both teams getting some offense. Well, Alistair Black now catching Badluck Farley in the corner. But Jay White in control of Cesaro. Travis Banks now in control of Rusev as well. Rusev. I remember Rusev was barefoot. Those were the days. Those were the days, my friend. Yeah, I don't know why I did that either, to be honest with you. I apologize profusely. Jay White now getting around the back of Cesaro looking for the reverse bloody Sunday. But it was blocked and Cesaro... Reverse into a vertical suplex now. Team Europe taking control and starting to pick off. Why did Team Europe not show this ability throughout the rest of the competition? They would have qualified, they bloody did. It's just too little too late from Team Europe, isn't it? It's like the pressure's been lifted. They were really pressured as a team that could go on and win the group. And then, we're saying that. Saying that, all of a sudden, New Zealand in firm control. There goes Alistair Black to the outside. Travis Banks stalking him. This could be interesting, you know, because Banks is going to take out Alistair Black. Jay White is taking down Cesaro as Badluck Fale razor edges Rusev. But Cesaro able to reverse Jay White and break it up. If Cesaro had not got that um, reversal when he did, this match would have been done and dusted in favour of New Zealand there. Nice back fist as well and strikes by Alistair Black. A lot of back and forth here. But as the match has gone on, we've seen New Zealand take more and more control. It was all Europe early on, but now New Zealand is getting there. Travis Banks, nice running forearm in the corner of Alistair Black. Jay White with a dive. Rusev. Up on the middle rope for no apparent reason. Jay White drops into the pin on Cesaro. Has his feet on the ropes though. And oh my god he won it. No referee your hand hit the mat for free then. I saw your hand hit the mat for free. You ain't no bullshit in me mate. Your hand hit the mat for free. Rusev. The front chancery on Badlet Fale. Now um, Cesaro hit a very European uppercut there on Jay White. and It's... it's Pretty even again. Although this could be it. Cesaro. Locking in Jay White for the sharpshooter. Travis Banks has got to save him here. He has to. And I think he did. Yes, he managed to take out Rusev in the uh, in the process as well. Travis Banks, great reversal there after the, the gut wrench. And the numbers are two on two in the middle of the ring. But it's Team Europe in control at this point in time. In comes Bad Luck Farley just as Jay White reverses Alistair Black. And now all six men are back in the ring. Mixed control, but uh, no, it looks like, well, looks like uh, Rusev caught more of Alistair Black than he did of Jay White. Nice fisherman's bust there by Jay White. On Rusev. Running dropkick by Cesaro. Only to get caught in the back by Travis Banks. Pin here by Jay White on Rusev. And it's enough. And Team New Zealand pick up the victory. I don't know what Jay White used to finish him off. But it was enough. And New Zealand not only win the night. But they win the bloody group as well. That means that New Zealand will finish the group on 12 points. US on 10. And both Scotland... And Europe finished joint bottom now, or joint fur, whichever way you look at it, in case your your glass is half full or glass is half empty. They both finished joint third or joint fourth on five points. Which isn't bad when you think about five out of fifteen isn't terrible. It's thirty three percent, but you need more than that. And Team New Zealand very, very happy with themselves as you can see. Bad luck Philo rocking his feminine side. Really rocking that feminine side. And they win the group. Which means they will get second place in Group B. US will have to take on the winners of Group B. And that will be decided over the next few days. With the next two matches from Group B. Japan versus Australia next. And England versus India. So let's just take a final look at the group. We will have a proper little episode just going through the group standings as well. Um, 
But the final look at the group is as follows, as it scrolls up slowly from the bottom of the screen. New Zealand on 12 points win the group. 12 out of 15 points is amazing when you look at it, actually. It's really, really good. They only lost out on 3 points. Wow. US with 10 out of 15 points. 66%. That's not bad. And both Scotland and Europe there are both on joint 5 points. Now, we're not going to do a buff match for them because there's really no point. There's nothing to gain for those two teams. They're both out no matter what. So, that's it. That's the end of Group A. The next time we see New Zealand and the US will be in a sudden death knockout style tournament against the winners in second place of Group B, which is coming up for you in the next few days. Of course, if you have enjoyed this one, please do hit the like button and, of course, subscribe if you want to see some more. I've been Shabby Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. What the hell was that? I'm a shame, the one to do. <laughs>